goes faster. Two weeks. Holy crap. Two weeks. Boom. Two, Two weeks. weeks. There we go. Weeks. We got nothing this week. Go home. All right. We'll see you guys later. Have a yeah, good that's one. That's the show. That's a wrap. Yeah. We're done. Um, Beer garden. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Brand new boss room. It's been um, it's been two weeks. It went by super fast. Two weeks. I call this my busy beard because I have been so busy here. Everybody has been just mm-hmm. insanely busy. And you go home and Shit. you just go to bed and you come back. Lots of plates spinning. Yeah, but it's good. It's all good. And we cannot wait uh, to show you guys what we're working on. We'll but just throw those plates right at your heads. Wow. So... We've got a lot going on today. We're going to debut a brand new weapon uh, for the pew, game, pew, pew, pew. which is going to be great. Um, our intern, community intern, Tyler, did a weird video. Uh, wait, wait, weird, weird, plushy thing I don't recognize. Let me guess, League. Oh, oh the hat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's League. Uh, I just, I, I got, Aaron had this. And I was You're going like, to be sweating by the end of this. So... So yeah, and we're going to take your questions. So we got some questions from Reddit and from Twitter, but we're also going to take questions from the chat as well. So let's just barrel forward we, and we talk about... We got a pretty good crowd going in there today. Yeah, yeah. no, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Stop watching those fat, those speed runs. Come visit. Everybody loves those speed runs. Okay. They, did, uh, yeah, fun, speed they did Unreal and in, in, uh, something I worked my butt off for three years with my peers, and they burned through it in 45 minutes. Yeah, mm-hmm. th- this is what we're showing off in a little bit. Hey, don't spoil it. Well, I'm just... Yeah, you get some prep. You gotta prep them. Stick around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see so, playing the fluffer. Yeah. Cool. Gotta get them ready. Don't be too good at a fluffer. It'll be a fluffer nutter. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about some of the stuff that's happened this week. Um, you know, not a crazy news week, but as you can see, Rocket League is... Everywhere, it's crushing it. Yeah, it yeah, it's good. Good for them, man. Well, so you know, I talked to various parties about why this game is such a thing because it's the second version of it. The first one, and I, um, I'm friends with the devs over there. I've known them for like ten plus years. Um, it was like super hyper aerial, fucking ball kicking cars or something like that. And then they re put it back out. Sony put it out for free, and it's crushing it. And I think what's happened in the few years since they put the first one out is the proliferation of streamers, YouTubers, all that has just gotten even crazier. And it's a great game to watch because yeah. it's it's control based. People can pull off amazing bicycle kicks with the fucking spoiler of their car. And uh, you know, just every day on like the websites that I go to and Reddit, there's always like an animated GIF or GIF of like somebody just crushing it and doing something really cool that nobody's seen before. Yeah, and what I what I love about it is that when I scroll through timelines and I see p- people posting, you know, GIFs or whatever, yep. it's. The game, the content of the game is excellent, and seeing those like skill shots, seeing all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't need to be like a you know a 1080p 60 frames per second video. It's just like that looks cool. Yeah, like, I mean, I want to play that. After years of always chasing, have to be the number one visual thing. There's a point where something is so fun and the visuals work that it's like it is. You know, like right now we're working on some really great looking stuff, but we don't have to sell the engine, which was like, oh, now we got to put in this random shimmer effect that makes no mm-hmm. sense because to show it off, and I'm like, fuck, I have to explain the fiction behind that. And now we can just make something that just looks great. But yeah, those guys, um, you know, they're out in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Dave Haywood and Jess Haywood, uh, who I knew back in the day. They worked on Unreal Tournament 2004. And if you've read any articles about this, the vehicle code originally uh, kind of came out of Unreal Tournament 2004's uh, Scorpion vehicle. And then they added in hmm. kind of a jump flip mode for that. It evolved into its own mode. And it's basically you're taking spinning bricks against a spinning sphere and knocking it around. And physics are always fucking fun. You know, that's at the end of the day... It's just, it's fun to watch. It's, it's bright colors, you know, everyone loves cars, and uh, the ball's huge. Apparently, if you hit somebody fast fast enough, they explode. I didn't know oh, that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I've only played it a little bit with the misses. We finally actually, my PS4 is brick, so we got it on PC, and we were, this is the kind of game what? we want to control it. Sony issued this fucking <laughs> update that, like, a, like, last year that just, if you, uh, if you got the update, it would break your system. Then you have to do this dumb thing with a USB and get the file off your computer and plug it in, and it's just so fucking complicated. Oh. I'm just, like, this close to buying another one. I think this, though, is just a perfect example is that if you make something fun and make it simple, they will come. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and I love a lifetime to master and always, mm-hmm. yeah, how many, uh, you know, how many YouTube videos does this game yield? You know, a lot, I bet, if you were to search for it. Yeah, so good for them. Craziness. Yeah. So, Tramel, you actually sent us uh, this next one here. Uh, <laughs> So Bethesda came out, Pete Hines, the, 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 the PR marketing uh, manager over at Bethesda, came out and said, we made a shitload of pit boys. Yes, indeed. And I didn't get yeah. one yet. You, what? I didn't get one. I got uh, mine in lockdown. So. Dude, I think Milky bought like five of them. He's going to sell on eBay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's like, like a t- Taylor Swift tickets. But I thought this was uh, interesting because the I think it's this is showing where 
uh, Fallout has just kind of like transist, transcended like yeah. what it was. Like Fallout Three was was big, but it wasn't like Fallout Four big. You know, it's not. Yeah, like, I totally agree. Somehow between three and four, it's gotten enough fame and enough recognition that now it's a thing. But Bethesda's doing such a good job with each game that you don't necessarily have to play the previous one in order to jump in. That's what I love about Skyrim. I'm talking about just, like, knowing what Fallout is. Yeah. Like, in Fallout 3, yeah, you yeah. had, like, this little core audience. Like, from 1 and 2, you had, like, a... It was, like, kind of a... Like, a niche game. Like, a lot, some people loved it way back in the day. Then 3 came out. I was like, oh, man, you know, it's kind of resurgence. But between somewhere between 3 and 4, it went from... Like a nice game to play to like Assassin's Creed type, and, and I think that came level. from being installed on consoles, like having the mm-hmm. console base going from PC with one and two, and then suddenly on, with three, it's on consoles. And now that you have that base that is familiar with the franchise, boom! Now you have yeah. four, and you have all of those people invested. It's a Western RPG, just crushing it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. here you go. You got people making all these pit bullies. But people are people are complaining about it. I hope you get one. Christmas is coming. Mm. Is the <laughs> fact that uh, you know Pete's like, look, we made a ton of them. They sold out, and people are complaining. It's like, look, you don't want a recreation of when Microsoft did the Halo cat helmet because there's nothing sadder <laughs> than a yeah. pile of those in a fucking sale box at Best Buy that just look like, oh, it's limited edition exclusive. No, there's just way too fucking many of them. The yeah. best collector's edition will, in my opinion, will always be the Black Ops RC car. Mm. That thing worked super well. It was awesome yeah. quality. I loved it, man. The only collector edition that I, I bought and regret to this day was um, Gears uh, Three. Nah, nah. Uh, Splinter Cell can not oh. convictions. Is that There's the one with the bomber? List. Yeah, it had the bomber. It was remote did, control did bomber. It work? Did it work? Yeah, it worked. Oh, how did it you work? Put it together, and it was like Pitch a it. yeah. It was like a giant. You get this giant box, and it comes with like a like a foam airplane bomber. And you fucking control the joint, dude. It's pretty cool. The That's game cool. was shit, but the, the fucking bombing was good. <laughs> That's gonna be, I'll put that in the box. <laughs> yeah. The game is shit, but the Tremel. bomb is awesome. Game shite, bomber awesome. Yeah, I was so disappointed with that game because Conviction was such a good oh. game. And then... This blacklist. You know what's going to happen is somebody's going to make a game that's about the near future or the now, and drone prices are going to get cheaper and cheaper because of China or whatever. And somebody's going to have like a drone that's features in the game and have a limited edition that actually comes with like a drone. Oh god, that's a legal oh, nightmare. Speaking of, probably. speaking of drones, you hear about the kid who hooked up a gun to a drone? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's slightly terrifying. Yeah, one of the, he's told his teacher about it, and he, the teacher was like, "Dude, don't do that." He did it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And went out in the fucking forest and was shooting. Trees no, there's, there's all these oh, weird, weird rules and laws about drones. Where like, if it's in your yard, are over, hovering. Over you, are you allowed to shoot it down and everything like that? It's like you know, yeah. fun. the future. There's a, there's a drone yeah. over my fucking. You know what FAA like? The broad definition of a drone is somewhere between a paper airplane and a fucking unmanned air, aerial vehicle. <laughs> it's like a, a gooey spitball and a bomb, yeah, exactly. And a fucking if, if unmanned it flies, bomber. If it flies, then it's like a fucking drone. Welcome to the boss room. A discussion on legal ownership of drones mm-hmm. by way of spitballs. By way of spitballs. Sweet. Cool. So another Shit thing that happened, and actually people in the chat are really interested to get our input on it, um, was Razer buying Ouya. I, my question is why, dude? Uh, I mean... Look, I'm not Mark Cuban when it comes to investing. I think I have a decent spidey sense. You know, Some of the things I've done have turned out well, but I, I was approached with this one, and I'm, you know, I don't want anything to fail ever. I wish the best for everyone out there, but for when it comes to my own money and time, you know, they approached me, they're like, do you want to be involved in this? I'm like... Who wants this? Like, what 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 gap does this fill? Yeah. Like, is anybody asking for this? Is there demand for it? Of course, I would have said the same thing about Rocket League. So, what the fuck do I know? Um, but I was like, no, I'm not gonna like potentially advise or put money into this because I just did. It, it, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't feeling it. You know? Well, but I mean, I mean, Razor obviously has plans for it, and uh, you know, do they though? I, really? I mean, like, yeah. It could be just a value add, like you know. Uh, just like Facebook buys, buying Mudbox and not doing anything. Yeah, Facebook it. buys for the you know it's Razor Public. I don't know, but sometimes they do that just to increase overall value and perception. And what? Right? Uh, hold up, uh, didn't uh, was who's, who's the freaking Farmville dudes? I forget the name. What? Zynga. Zynga. Zynga, oh, bought, yeah. Zynga bought Natural Motion, which is like. The like the physics, the ragdoll. Yeah, yeah. They bought them, and well, now what? Like, oh, I think they want to making that uh, kung fu, uh, your little kung fu buddy game. I can't remember what the fuck it was called, which actually did decently, if I recall. I can't remember. Yeah, so, I'm just saying, it's a, a string of companies kind of buying stuff and not really. Yeah, at some point, it becomes the blob, which yeah. I'm telling you holds up. You just eat everybody. <laughs> so headclot in uh, in chat says, That's "I a own disturbing an, name." 
Yeah, it is disturbing. But he says, I own a Ouya, and I'm happy that Razor has acquired Ouya for its tech. So, I mean... Would you well, be willing to say Booyah? Ha! <laughs> but did you put money in as, I guess, because it was kickstarted? Was it was it Ouya? Or... Kickst- everybody does a kickstarter now. Yeah, they did a kickstarter. The fucking, the famous dude who dr- does wheelies around town uh, with the fucking American flag is doing a Kickstarter. Right? Really? Yeah. Who's wow. that? Rodney Hines, local wheelie kings, local celebrity. He's doing a Kickstarter oh, for what? To, to get like t-shirts and shit, right? I mean, like, he's a, he's a local dude. He's awesome. I don't, I don't care what he's doing. I'm going to Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> I like a t-shirt. Shout out, No Hand King. So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen there. It's kind of interesting. Kind of a slow news week. Here's, so. here's my yeah. live prediction. Nothing. <laughs> oh, is nothing that... anyone cares about. Uh, That's basically what's going on. T- do we have time to talk about the Flash a little bit? Flash, the Flash, the TV show. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, is this something how, that you how, can get how pissed far, about? How far have you gotten into it? So I'm on. I, I just saw the one with the dude who could turn into steel. I didn't see that episode. Which, like, they've had both episodes. I had a game idea a while back about a character that could kind of change density and things like that, and they've had both characters in two episodes. It's, it's so absorbing, man. That's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, powers and all that. So I, you know, I skipped the show initially. You know, I have some friends over at DC. I felt a little bad about it because I was, I, you know, what's the CW dude, right? And yep. then, um, you know, we tuned into the pilot, and it was actually, for what I expected, fun. You know, like it was, you know. Daredevil took four episodes to really get going. It was grim, dark, but the Flash, man, you know, like, and all I see when I see the kid is fucking Peter Parker, even his voice. He looks like Spidey to me. The Flash, dude, like, first, <laughs> <laughs> here we go, here we go. He's winding it up. First and foremost, like the the dude, the the character itself oh is just ridiculous. Okay, so, so is Batman and Superman. No, Batman is actually grounded in reality. He ha- they have him doing stuff that's somewhat realistic, right? You don't have you don't ever have Batman falling off a building and surviving it, not without breaking his fall well, somehow. He's, he's, he's some Iron shit. Man. He's the tangible superhero who's, tan- who's superhero through money. Yeah, exactly. So like the Flash, he's got so many weapons in his arsenal, and they always just come out at the very convenient times. Yeah, it's ex machina. So he's got he's got the speed. Yeah, he's got the speed, and of course he can go back in time, which pretty much is just like the dumbest thing. Wait, he went, but he goes back in time at one point? Yeah, he goes back in the time. <laughs> Come on, man, where you been? I never followed the Flash He's got time this. travel powers. Is dude. it in the show? Yes. Oh, God, that's going to be the resolution of the whole mom thing. I know it. God dude, damn it. No, when you get there, All right. you'll, you'll see what happens. All right. But anyway. They say episode nine. My tweet, my feed has been saying is when it gets good. So, People support me in the fucking chat, for fuck's sake. So when he go, he may, obviously, Flash can go back in time. He can vibrate through walls. He can run around the fucking earth in like a matter of seconds. Dude, come on, man. Like, seriously? And then they had an episode with Gorilla Grodd in it. I, I don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. <laughs> I O nine, I O nine did a good don't story. Don't even get me started. Like you were okay. Oh, but people know? are excited for Overwatch with a big fucking gorilla. Yeah, but they ain't Gorilla Grodd. They don't know nothing about that gorilla. Everybody <laughs> knows Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> All right. Like, uh, just imagine, like how how strong would Gorilla Grodd have to be to stop a dude going what ten thousand miles an hour? Uh, he'd have to basically. Yeah, he'd, he'd have to. Okay, I'm gonna tell you about this. It's, it's easy, like he's a giant. I'm gonna tell you about bullet. this. No, I'm tell you about this sequence, dude. He runs from five miles away. He did that to the the steel dude. Five miles away, dude. Mm-hmm. Got up enough speed, and he tried to punch Gorilla Grodd, and Gorilla Grodd grabs his fist and doesn't fucking move. Come on, so dude. So is he a super gorilla? Like what's he just story? like he just stops him like this, dude. And not he didn't even like flinch. He was just like, like, dude, come on, dude. How fast were you going? They're trying to shut him down. It's like, so he, bad. Yeah. That's the, the superhero arms race gets to that point. That's where, what like, I'm. That's the problem I have with uh, when they put like superheroes who are stupid powerful, like and Superman. They give, yeah, and they put them in the TV show because they have to tr- find a way to like trip them up. But the the trip up is always something stupid and goofy. Yeah, well, you know, bats versus soups. It's going to be kryptonite. Yeah, it's yeah. dumb. Like, they had an episode, I was telling you about, there's an episode when the Flash gets subdued by robot bees. Nano bees, dude. Everybody in the chat is just like, this is spoiler central. Yeah. Well, oh well. I'm sorry. Yeah, Tremel doesn't care. It's so old, dude. doesn't care. Catch up with your TV. (laughs) Come on, man. This episode was like two years ago. 
Come right. on. Enough, no, enough spoilers. Wait. People will quit for that shit. People are very sensitive about spoilers. You're like, like especially it, it's, a, it's a show about a guy who runs fast. And they're like, fucking spoilers, dude. I know, dude. You're but, ruining everything. But anyway, that's just some tidbits yes. throughout the season. There's plenty more to see where that came those from. Were, those so. were nuggets. Those yeah, were tidbits. I'm telling you, it's... it's those it's good those, and it's bad those, at the same those time. Those weren't chicken nuggets. That was like half the fucking breast. <laughs> Not even close. There's so much more in this. All right. So much more in there. Trust and me. And everybody in that show is good looking. Yeah. yeah. CW. Even yep. the nerds. Yep. All right. Let's take oh, some. Uh, let's take some questions. Uh, we asked on Twitter and Reddit, so we're going to answer some of our user questions here. Um, first one from Adavax three one one. On same Adavax. Yeah. What's up, Adavax? Yep. Um, he asks on Reddit. Any plans for a forum? Um, it is being built right now. Yep. There we go. So See, absolutely, 100%. And it you should ask for great. a Ferrari next week. So we'll go to the next one. I'm just going to get through these real quick. Uh, next one is from uh, Hoi Hoi Games on our subreddit. Hoi Hoi. What are some of the core development points uh, that Blue Streak is based upon and that you will always come back to? Um, I can't really say much without spoiling a uh, mm-hmm. potential reveal that might happen. Um, but for me, it's, you know, Gears, when I worked on Gears, it was about stopping and, like, taking cover and, and, and not... And I've alluded to this before in this, this podcast, and not really necessarily flowing through the world. Um, Is that a development point? I think he's talking about actually making games. Yeah, am, not, I answer, am I not answering not the design, question all right? I mean, design philosophy. What are some core of development points? points? Well, like, yeah, look at that from a production pillars, standpoint yeah. or a game pillar, right? Yeah, I'm thinking. It's, I'm thinking it's just making games. Like, so what do you go back what, to? Like, when you when you started making a game, like, what is the thing that you must have in order to like begin? Well, I think the one thing I can tease with this is that we don't have parkour, but the game in some instances feels like the floor is lava. If that helps. Yeah, I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Without I'll a, take it. Neither, there's no actual lava. There is no. no, no for no. the record. All right. Don't we'll go to the next one. So on Twitter, uh, from AJ Ocking, uh would love some details about the online component of the game. In parentheses, engineering, design side, uh, also how lag is countered, etc. Yeah, that's a bit more of an engineer question. But yeah. um, when you talk about, you know, Arjan, he literally this week. He had his uh, iPhone with the super slow mo, and he was taking a uh, video of him going boop and hitting the mouse and firing with one of the weapon we we're going to reveal today. And he caught like 50 milliseconds of lag just between pressing the button. And lag is one of those things that adds up progressively. You know, if you have that 50 milliseconds, and then you have the refresh rate of a bad monitor that adds another 50, and then you have 200 online, suddenly you're dealing with a third of a second before your stuff is responsive. And with the pacing of the game, we need it to be boom, boom, boom. And that's that's one of the things Call of Duty does right with the little Ben Heck controllers. And Rod over at uh, Black Tusk uh, read a Polygon article where he's you know they're they're doing it too because I tried to fight that fight at in certain battles in previous games and lost it, but um, he's crazy about that shit. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So Lee Roberts VO. Uh, What's on, up, Lee? Yeah, Lee's great. Um, I, was, that, looks, oh, he's, I never clicked on his thumbnail. Doesn't that look like Ice T? I don't know. It's a pirate, isn't it? I think it's is a pirate. It pirate Ice T. <laughs> he does kind of. Yo, let's, yo, let's go get the booty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, Coco's ass. Uh, so Lee Roberts asks: Are we going to have over an overarching storyline, or are we going for a classic shoot 'em up and explosions? Explosions. I think this is a great question. That, um, no, they're all fantastic. Um, you know, in the channel earlier, they're asking about lore, right? And like I've said before, you know, when you make a sci-fi world, people need to you know care about it. Um, there's things in upcoming marketing materials where we purposely allude to things in the world without saying what they are. And I'm a big fan of like having mystery. I like with Gears, we never said why the Locust Queen may or may not have been human. Uh, you know, we never really said what their true motivation was necessarily. We let the community piece it together. Um, Destiny did a good job with a lot of that stuff, but they, they were almost a little bit too vague in spots. I saw that latest update, side note about Destiny, I sent it around, it pretty cool. Like, mm-hmm. You're in this giant fucking board ship, and I, I'm like, I need to go back to that game and unbrick my PS4. Yeah, but there's a lot about there's a lot with story that frames a lot of the game, and I think it's really it's really compelling. And it you know there's a reason for everything, and I think having a strong fiction uh, you know helps make the game better from all aspects. And I mean you know we recently recorded some character barks, you know the little things they say when they're mm-hmm. fighting or whatever, kill people and take them out. And you know it's so hard to have nuance in any of that, but with just one line you know, and Josh Parker was reinforcing this with us the other day. It's like if you allude to like. This, this person's doing something because they lost somebody or for revenge or something, then you're like, I want to know. Like, what's that all about? Yeah. Why, 
why do they keep referencing their father? You know, and like they go check out the lore and you know get to know the character a little bit. Yeah, if you leave enough holes in there, everybody else will fill in the blank. Exactly. I mean, this this the matrix syndrome. Like the first matrix was so awesome because you had a lot of questions. It's in your mind. right? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you start answering those questions, you fuck it up. It's a fucking force. It's mystical. Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Leave it there. So that. finally, uh, Todd Rugley on Twitter asks, "What does the team feel will make PBS Project Blue Streak?" Uh, the game we will want to play over other titles we love. What's different? Hashtag hook. Well, part of it was what I answered with uh, the, the Reddit question, but I'm going to leave this to Tremel. Um, I'm talking too fucking much. I think, it's, I think it's more about the speed in which you play, like in the differences in the characters, like how there's so many different ways you can go about it and so many different uh, variations in the game Verse. without giving up too much about the game. So it's like... Like you always say, it's like you know, it's it's easy to get into and, and harder to master. And that mastery, that time to master, is um, a little bit longer. I think is probably than most first person shooters, and it's a lot deeper than most first person, first person yeah, shooters. Yeah, we get newbies in play test with everyone yeah. else, and they just get wrecked. Yeah, so I mean, having that longevity <laughs> and having that that like That's that good. many different choices to like go, how many different routes you can go, as far as like I want to be this guy, and then. It takes you, you know, two, three months to get to, like, the upper echelon of what that guy can do. And then once you master him, you got, like, a whole shit ton of other guys that you can you can start, uh, you know, adding to your repertoire. So, and then they all kind of work together in different ways and different counters and stuff like that. So, it's a, it's a lot of content just with the, the small package that we're delivering. Balancing's fun. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So, everybody, when we ask questions on, on Twitter and we ask, you know, for you to ask... Uh, please weigh in. I mean, we'll, we'll do our best to answer everything that we can. So I've had a really good hair day. Nice. I'm having a good hat day. <laughs> and with that, uh, our community intern, Tyler, uh, put together a, a video, um, something that happened here in the office. We're, it's a classic we're, video. We're, we're referring to it as the incident. Game dev bathroom classic. culture, man. It's a motherfucker. Yep. Classic, dude. So let's take a look. Awesome. So just tell us a little bit about the incident. The incident. Well, so, you know, I was dropping some sailors off the pool and, uh, you know, I, I got up to, uh, um, you know, hike up my bridges. The, there's a, uh, shoehorn in the door so that you can't break it in all the way and it stopped for the first time and then somebody just must have put their whole shoulder into it and just ran through the door and here comes Anthony Handy you know looking like he's doing a pee pee dance and was totally surprised luckily I had my pants up in time before uh, you know, he got in there or else he would have had an uh, unpleasant surprise so. <laughs> what happened with the bathroom incident dude is um I was, I got out the, I, I just got through talking to Lee, and um, just headed to the bathroom. I didn't think anybody was in there. I didn't look, right? Like, I just opened the door, and uh, there was Milky just standing at me looking so angry, like, you know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to get fired. So, like, if you're going to the bathroom, always lock the door. That's, that's tip number one, if you have an office that has locks. Um, I usually never lock the door. Um, I just hoped that nobody would come in. You have the slide, if it's okay to go in, there's a green thing, and if it's not okay, there's a red stop sign. Red means stop, green means go. If red means stop, green means go. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. No. Uh, the other thing is, is that knocking helps? I did not, I did not. I knocked on, I used to knock, and then I stopped knocking. If the door it doesn't yield to a slight kick, or a nudge, and then I think there's somebody in the bathroom. I guess I don't follow none of those tips, but I follow them now. Like, I lock the door, I turn the light on, and um, and then I change the sign. And then I wait and listen to see if anybody's coming, and then I do what I gotta do. So yeah, we move past it. Yeah, we're all good now, you know? But I think uh, it'll be an experience that he'll never forget. Coaster. Fuck the coaster. No coaster. No coaster. No coaster. <laughs> Mr. Anthony Handy, 
the violator. <laughs> the violator. <laughs> that really happened. And open the door. Hey, what are you doing in here? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't imagine like two people more different having yeah. that encounter than you and Milky. Yep. Yeah, man, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you got PTSD. It's just like just locked eyes. Yes, it was. Um, it was scary. I thought I was. I thought I was. Um, I thought that was my last day. <laughs> it was bad. So there is a reason we have you here. Um, you know, you came on as as an intern, and you just destroyed it. And and there was a there was a void on the art team that needed to be filled. That was your specialty. Mic drop Friday. And um, so we, you're, we hired you. You hired me. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it can happen. Yeah. Um, it was it was completely unexpected. Um, it was a it was just life changing moment. I didn't expect to actually become a permanent team member. But um Well sometimes when you like you know, having the pleasure of, of offering a job to you, like we were walking down and grab a bite, you know, it was uh Chris, um it was RJ and Tramel yeah. and I. Yeah. And you know, like sometimes, you know, if we take somebody to like a lunch like that, people don't know if it's a good lunch or a bad lunch. That's how I was gonna get fired. Yes. <laughs> So there wouldn't be lunch. If you're <laughs> so it's like you know, if something like that happens, I realize that you need, at the beginning, be like, "This is good. This is cool." And like, so we sat down, and I was like, "Oh, I didn't actually mention something." So it was actually a pleasure to do that. So yeah, welcome man. To board, man, it was it was just wonderful, and um, I'm just happy to be a permanent part of the team. So I'm looking forward to longevity and just continuing to, to continuing to drop the mic on the art side. So continue What's to it? barge in the bathrooms. No, no, we, we we got that part. They actually got the day after that. The whole studio got locks on. It. Yeah, because yeah, funny, funny how that happens. <laughs> I'm like, what is so locks you? On? Thank you. You're the it's reason why we have the locks. We got locks now. That's a very private time for a person. That's crazy, man. I'm raiding my Twitter feed when I'm doing that. So you but, still got hired even after that, yeah. or did that happen after? No, or? I got hired after, so it was cool. Poor, yeah. <laughs> poor Chris can't get a break. It so. Was cool. So with that, um, we we are actually going to open up two new internships that we're, we're announcing right now for 3D environment artist internship. And there's two. There's two slots. Those are actually active right now on uh, bosskey.com uh, careers. So you can go over there after the stream and take a look and apply. So uh, Anthony, Tell your friends. Yeah. So it can happen. And... Our art team needed somebody like you, and you were yeah. already here, and yeah. It's crazy, you know. Dreams do come true, man. Just hard work pays off, you know. You just got to keep keep believing, keep the faith, and just, just put in that time. Yeah, cool. a certain amount of God-given talent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it helps too, so. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're happy to have you, man. Congratulations. Thanks, man. So Thanks very cool. Thanks, Definitely. So what we're going to do now is... Um, we're gonna check out the weapon, and but we're gonna do it in a in a special way. So so Jay Hawkins, who is the very first, you've worked with him at Epic. He was the very first uh, concept artist on staff here at Boss Key. Oh jeez. Um, this weapon is special because it's the first one uh, that was created for for the game. Yeah, it had a few iterations too. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that Jay was a part of introducing this. So. I did a short video. Oh, you got him on camera again. Yep. He's great on he's camera. Great. He's great. He acts awesome. all shy. I'm like, oh, he's really not. Yeah, no, he's, he's great. It's an act. Yeah. Yeah. So let's take a look. <laughs> Jay is going to unveil the weapon unveil. and then um, unveil. <laughs> unveil. GIF. GIF. Um, and GIF. Then, and then we're going to have Tramel back on and we're going to go through it and then show the final one that's in the game. So let's watch. Fire it up. The creation of the aerator was actually interesting because it was the first concept I did for Cliff when I started at Bosque. So he basically said to me, I need an assault rifle that looks kind of different than anything you've done before. He wanted it to be sort of a District 9 Elysium sort of thing. And uh, he said, "Take," because I was working at home at the time, he's like, show me what you got in, you know, by the end of the day. So these three uh, sketches were actually uh, sort of the first day of work, just kind of blowing off the dust and, and getting to work with Cliff again and you know just spitballing what exactly he was looking for. Um, just trying to put some color into it like, uh, like, like Broadmoor did with his uh, District 9 weapons. Cliff's a big fan of Greg Broadmoor. Uh, and just kind of you know adapting to, to what an assault rifle is, but for a future sort of game.
because we had no idea what we were doing at this point. <laughs> so with this iteration, we sort of focused in on a more uh, kind of extreme sports sort of theme. Um, I went and found some motocross, some ATV stuff, and it was a theme that we've actually picked up on uh, perhaps for the rest of the game. I grabbed a picture of an ATV and I just started throwing colors on the guns, you know, sort of real quick, you know, in an afternoon. Then of course Cliff, uh, you know, typical sort of throw a chainsaw on a gun sort of thing. He, he said, uh, you know, instead of a, a regular magazine, let's, I want a ball as the magazine and it shoots pellets and stuff and, you know, I remember working with him at Epic because I started rolling my eyes like, oh my God, are you serious, you know? Here we go again, but it actually, it, it really worked well. It, it kind of redefined what the gun looked like and took it to a new place. Yeah, so this is kind of the final sketch for this gun. Um, it was maybe two days in, three days, and we didn't even have a modeler for this thing at, at this point. Uh, so it was gonna kind of define what our game was gonna look like as far as technology and all that goes in a really quick, quick iteration. So I threw the ball in there, I threw some little carbon fiber on there, you know, kind of chopped up the shapes a little bit so it wasn't so completely um, contemporary. Uh, tried to take it into future land, threw some, you know, what represents logos and, and whatnot on there, showed how, maybe how the ball was going to pop out, things like that. And Cliff said, yeah, that's great, you know, this is a great first iteration, let's move on to characters real quick. So. Um, I didn't actually get to ever build this one out in 3D, which I like to do. It was some, you know, just a simple side sketch, but it was enough to get the ball rolling. No pun intended. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pew I, pew. Yeah. I, I, having Jay kind of talk about the weapon, I think, is really important because, I mean, that, that was him. And you know what's really fucking fantastic is the fact that the chat room shit out on us, so we can't see if you guys I thought know. that was kind of interesting or not. <laughs> Everybody left. I know. <laughs> like, oh, they didn't say there'd be guns in this game. Dude, yeah, but this. yeah, Hawk's awesome, dude. Yeah, I, it's it's incredible, and it, it's so special to see like that. Those initial uh, interpretations of the weapon kind of started the trend of where everything was going weapon wise, mm -hmm. and it's really cool. So, so for me, I like. Oh, is this the part where I talk about the gun, or what are we doing? So let's go. We're actually going to take a look at okay. the Jay's iterations. Cool. Um, and it'd be great to get your thoughts and also Tramel because this is before you came on, mm -hmm. Tramel. So this was well, Jay's kind of thumbnail <laughs> of the direction that you guys initially decided on. You ruined it. So yeah. So um, in a lot of the designs in the New World, you know, like it's like, what's the inspiration for this? Even with some of the audio, some of the audio has sounds a little, you know, a little bit like an animal or a, or a motorbike or something. But when Hawk was working on some of the initial designs, you know, the inspiration was kind of like sporty ATV, you know, those kinds of angles, you know, like some of our other weapons that we've revealed are inspired by like Italian sports cars and things like that. And uh, this one, you know, had a very District 9 vibe to it, which I'm t completely and totally okay with because of Greg Broadmoor is a badass too. And um, the one thing I, I had to see out of this as we iterated was I haven't seen a spherical magazine on a gun. I, there may be some out there in some of the many Borderlands ones or something, but I hadn't really seen it as kind of an iconic weapon. And, uh, you know, the idea is it's filled with kind of little small almost pellets of depleted uranium, and so as it rotates, it dumps each one out, and the more you fire it, the hotter it gets, and so your subsequent you know, shots towards the end of the magazine are, not a clip, a magazine, are uh, more and more powerful, and uh, it's basically like our kind of gateway drug assault rifle for the game, well, the workhorse. Mm -hmm. Tramel? So what? Do you have any thoughts on the, the original thumbnail sketches? No. All right, sweet. All right, we'll see you guys later. Have a good night. There's no story because the story doesn't start until after the these. Actually All right, started. we hadn't actually decided at this point, besides the spherical magazine looking like a, just kind of like a gun as a gun, uh, who the weapon manufacturer was. Uh, Tremel wasn't on board, and he hadn't identified kind of like what the key materials that each weapon manufacturer has. Mm -hmm. I mean, we put a lot of work into the fiction for this. There's certain. Uh, you know, companies you'll see logos for in the world, where, you know, that we'll just allude to that later on more and more fiction will come out about it. So, mm -hmm. so the next, the next kind of set is it's this made its transition into 3D. So Josh Reif, when he came on, he did some 3D models of the aerator, and you can kind of see its progression here. I so, think yeah. this was his test, right? Yeah, I think it was his test. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's talented. Everybody you got to test it. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, that's crazy. So yeah, it's rife with detail. <laughs> hey, oh, waka waka. But you can see how this is making its translation now to to going towards in game, 
Um, well, the, the, the rule, I mean, Jayhawk and I talk about it. It's like we're not making, you know, SpaceX here. You know, it, 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 you do want it to look like it could actually exist and work to a point. But at mm-hmm. some point, it just like, needs to look fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Just a life lesson. So this I guess... fucking rotating. I guess let's take a look at the, the final in-game. And then, Tramiel, you can... You got... Okay. There he goes. Look at that. So, um... Oof. You skipped over such a large portion of how this came to be. <laughs> so let it out, let it out. I have no idea of how I got there. So according to the definition that I got originally had from Cliff, uh, this manufacturer creates the highest of in highest end guns and so on and so forth. Uh, and they don't deal in like traditional bullet type weapons and things like that. Like you said, it's depleted uranium. And that manufacturer, before we got to, uh, before this actually got assigned to a uh, person to actually used, to use was what, uh, what uh, Jay had concepted. Mm-hmm. So by the time this actually got assigned to a character, this manufacturer had been, you know, kind of fleshed out, and the look and feel of this manufacturer um, has transformed into more of a smooth, kind of high end. Uh, really futuristic kind of look. So when it still looks like a gun. Yeah, it still looks like a gun. Not but, a fucking Dyson vacuum. Um, what Cliff wanted was okay. This thing needs to behave like a you know typical gun in 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 the matter of sense. So it's, you should feel like you're playing like any other traditional uh, FPS. This is the first Gleek one we're showing, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the first Gleek weapon. This is actually actually no, it's probably it's maybe a couple of Gleek uh, weapons after this. I mean prior to this. But then this one came on, and it kind of we took what the silhouette from Jay's gun, and then uh, Ethan took that and started smoothing out the edges and actually bringing in some of the Gleek uh, sensibilities into that that weapon. So this is where it, it ended up uh, after uh, you know Ethan took a couple passes on it uh, and kept like the silhouette. We basically put them side by side and laid them on top of each other, uh, and then Ethan kind of traced over it and then said, "These are the things we need to keep." You know, length of the barrel, this little piece, you know, that, you know, having the, the sight on the top and so on and so forth. And going back and forth on the, what does the first person look like, too. Yeah, exactly. So we had a bunch of uh, different iterations in first person view. Uh, the ball was a little bit too big as you, when you start getting into first person. So we shrunk that down and we've made a bunch of adjustments since then. But as soon as we get it on screen, then, a, a, you know, a lot of things come to light. So uh, this is where it ended up. Uh, Lee just did a render of this, and uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it came out pretty nice. The uh, that little strap's got little physics flappy bits. Um, I can confirm you can see on the top of it. We actually do have aim down sights yep. on several weapons. Uh, yep. We're not a full aim down sights type of game. I don't want to just go full Call of Duty on people. You never go full Call of Duty. Um, but you know, having a weapon that you can kind of get closer and kind of you know tighten up your aim a little bit, um, it's pretty cool to see. And uh, you know, it, it's got a little bit of kick on it. The reload, uh, you know, it used to be like. The reload, the ball would pop out, and it would be like, place the ball in, and I'm like talking to Ryan, I'm like, dude, no, like, pop that shit open, and then fling the ball up and fucking catch it, and it just looks super fucking whoosh, right, every time you do it. It's yeah, really good. It's really I mean, if, nice. you're, if you're going to be stuck not shooting, at least it should fucking look cool. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole centerpiece opens up, and, uh, like, the front of the gun kind of, you know, separates, and then the ball sits down in there, and then closes up on it, so it's a pretty good animation. Yep. And oh, and you'll see the you know, to the right of the sphere. There's like these little animated bits that kind of little rotate as you're. Yeah, the ball it. actually rotates in that in that sphere. Like some kind of magnetic field rotates it, and then you see, uh, and then that the the blue lines actually turn red over time. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah, people that people up. are asking if the blue glows. Like yeah, blue. it glows, and then it actually turns red once you like uh, Cliff was explaining. As you run out of ammo and it gets hotter and hotter, it starts to glow. Which is funny because it's actually kind of taking a game mechanic that was in Gears that I never really admit much where the last bullet in every magazine was 25% stronger as a hidden thing to make it seem like, I just finished that guy, I can't believe it, wow, that was so close, how did that happen? And uh, Which I gave to Randy for Borderlands, he put it in Borderlands. Um, but for this also, it actually is a mechanic where it ramps up damage, so it's kind of a, yeah. You know, as you get towards the end of the magazine, yeah. it deals more damage. It's still you know yeah. you know a good basic good looking assault rifle, but it's also you know has a couple of tricks up its sleeve, and that's my thing. It's always just take yeah. it and just twist it a little bit. And one of the cool things about Gleek is that also in 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 their their like materials list is like this kind of bulletproof plexiglass. 
So like on the back end near the stock, you can see like all the, the gears and the engine parts in there moving around and you can look right through the glass and see all kind of stuff moving around in it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and we haven't had any sorting issues with that glass, which is no, rare. For, no, that's cool. Pull, the, pull all the stops right on that. Any, anytime you put translucency in a game, man. <laughs> yeah, for you mentioned this a second ago, the aim down sights. Mm-hmm. I think that that... I love that, and that's only, you know, this gun has that feature, but that's not, like you said, across the well, board. Well, one of the things, things, like, you know, back in the day with UT, we had, like, the some of the scripted numbers in the weapons to see how much ammo you have, and I'm pretty sure we're pretty consistent with it for most weapons. We're, like, mm-hmm. on the guns, we actually have the animated little light. Yeah, everybody, everybody's got the ammo counter. The little right? aliens counter, right? Mm-hmm. So it's one less fucking thing on the HUD, put it in the weapon, and then when you aim down sights, it does a little mini, like, kind of display on the aim down sights. So, pretty subtle. It would t- tell me we at least have a couple more angles. Uh, we don't, no. but, we'll, but we'll put them up. We'll put them up on Art Station. We're gonna do like a okay. huge deployment on cool. Art Station. Oh, like so let's show art. a little here and give a reason. Mm-hmm. I'll go to the Art Station. All right. Yeah, we love Art Station. It's it's really great. Um, it's at it's at Tacula. Yeah. Did you, did, did you, you everybody knows about the swords up there, right? Yeah, yeah. I tweeted it. All right, yeah, cool. yeah, people know about the swords. So we got a couple questions uh, from the chat. Um, let me go here. <clears throat> So Steve eighty five UK asks, what would make an intern applicant, and this is good for the art, stand out as an environment artist? Uh, great, great texture quality, uh, a good knowledge of PBR materials, uh, work inside of Unreal Four would be great. Um, you know, beyond that, just being able to model properly. You know, being able to create high poly models and bake them down with uh, proper normal maps and and uh, so on and so forth. You know, cool. Pretty basic stuff. Like I don't, I don't expect someone to be like ready to go. Like oh, I should be, I should get a job tomorrow. I would much rather have somebody that I can see potential in, and can we can actually teach them the way that we do things. Um, so you don't don't be afraid to like submit your stuff because you don't think you're good enough. Go ahead and submit and. You know, if we see the potential and we can see like the, the long term implications of you being here, then you know that's that's even better. So just just submit what you got and, and see what where it falls out. Quick side note, somebody in the chat was talking about the twenty five percent thing for gears. That was only in single player. That wasn't in competitive. That would be dumb. So Tooth underscore asks, if the aerator uh, has iron sights, does that mean it has no secondary mode? Uh, no, the secondary button is the iron sights. Correct. So I would actually say that, that that's because it's not consistent across all weapons, it's special to the aerator. I would say that that's that's its alt fire. Yeah, like, I mean it, 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 it yeah. modifies the spread. It gives you a different view. Yeah, I totally. mean, not every alt fire necessarily has to turn into transforming rockets that shoot out of Uranus. It, yes. <laughs> True. Like, that's kind of a good idea. It's kind of nice. The, <laughs> the worst idea uh, ever. <laughs> Easily Baffled asks, uh, when making the reload animation, did you have to worry about it taking too long uh, and keeping the p- player out of the game? I think that's an excellent question. No, well, I mean, we had a few weapons where the reload felt like it was about four fucking hours for yeah. a while there. I hear Arjan screaming across the fucking room from me. Um, and, you know, reloading is one of the things, you know, we do have some of, the, some of that kind of old school shooter DNA in the game. But reloading is an important part of the strategy of paying attention to how much is in your magazine, the time it takes to reload, getting caught. Could you swap to other weapons? What do you do? And uh, you know, what we usually try and do to prevent, you know, art having to redo shit, which is a waste of everybody's time and money, is to decide as close as we can to what we think the reload would be with, like, prototype animations, just based in, you know, blocked in shit. And then once we feel pretty comfortable with a margin of error of 10 to 15% or so, you know, we get the reload animation done. And, you know, the reload animation that looks great, if it's sped up a smidge just for balance reasons or, slow, or slowed down a tiny bit, generally people don't notice. But, yeah, it's one of the many things design has to finish to prevent being a bottleneck for these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so, oh crap, it's Jeremy. Oh, asks, crap, Jeremy. <laughs> He's fucking back, dude. Oh crap, it's Jeremy. Asks, uh, will the animations be mo-capped or are you guys going full keyframe? Uh, we do have some mo-cap and, we, and because of the, some of the extreme moves on the character side, those are, those are hand key. Uh, first person stuff is always uh, hand key. If this game came out of the mid '90s, we could have called it Extreme Moves. Darkwing from the chat Two asks, uh, "Any plans for facilitating the esports with the game?" Dude, we yeah, we talk about this every time. Yeah. You know, let's build a great game. If you guys show up and check it out, and we can build a rock solid community, maybe we'll make the leap. 
Yeah, I mean, you, I don't think we, anybody should go into creating a game saying, we're going to make an eSports game. It's like, no, no you got to make a fun game, and then it becomes an eSport because it's supported and it's fun. Yeah, well, the eSports is like, you know, I saw the writing the wall like got over 10 years ago, and it's like, okay, you look at, you know, StarCraft in Korea and the World Cyber Games and all that, like, this is going to be a thing. Everything oh, that shit, it was a thing when you was a kid. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a thing. Whole fucking circle. <laughs> yep. Nintendo World Champ. If you happen to watch that video of me in the 1990 Nintendo World Championships, please take note that at that time and up to that point, I had beaten 69 NES and super uh, regular Nintendo games, the original old school shit. Like I beat fucking Deadly Towers and Rygar. So just for the record, and thought fanny packs were cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, I had a lot of shit to carry. <laughs> <laughs> I will be, I will be cocky as fuck about my Nintendo beatings, even though I got I choked at the end. <laughs> Still, who else can? Who else has that video, man? <laughs> Fanny pack. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna wrap it up. It's already five forty-five. Shit, that was I fast. Got yeah. a beer and bourbon festival to go to. Oh, so we're gonna not, not drink at all. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a <laughs> festival for you. Yes. <laughs> Maybe they'll have the shrimp. Festival. Lots of shrimp. Maybe. Possibly. Get, Where's get that a shrimp cup. Carry somewhere. A carry a coca booth or whatever. I don't know. I'm he just following. Know. He's Milky. just following Milky there. Yeah. Get Milky ripped. He said he, I was gonna, supposed to be the DD, but he, I guess he turned me down. So. Oh, shit. I don't think I've seen Milky Ripped. I'd love to see Milky Ripped. Oh, my God. He Periscope. Said, yesterday, he said he was going to get totally hammered. And I was like, all right, I'll take you home. And then today, he was like, yeah, you don't need to take me home. I think my favorite person in the studio to get hammered is Chris Morris. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, one, he's, one, hammered. he's always smooth and oh. One question from the chat real quick that I want to answer is uh, OAC, uh, OSX Unlimited asks, any plans to do more level design based videos? I really enjoyed the first look at the top down maps and Mammoth Outpost. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, whenever a reveal might happen, um, we'll be more free to talk about it, you know, if we're showing off level or levels in that reveal. I think, you know, once the kimono is opened, that's kind of an interesting metaphor considering the, the, the Shura. Um, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, we can start being like, okay, the stuff that we showed, here's how it was built, you know. One of the things that we talked about earlier, and I hope we're still doing, is saving all the work in progress of, you know, blocked in level videos, just like everything to kind of show the journey of how we kind of got to where we were. Yep, and no... Show the process, how yeah, the sausage is made. Just take comfort in knowing that that's something that I want to do. And when I'm here, that's it's going to happen, so... Kick ass, you best. All right. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Um, if you are interested in the 3D Environment Artist Internship, again, go to bosskey.com uh, forward slash careers and check out the listing. Apply. Um, Tell and, your friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and keep trying. If you, if, you, if you get rejected this time, I'm sure we'll do something else again. So keep, keep practicing. Get your gear up, you know. Get your your game up, and then uh, persistence. You know, keep on coming back. Cool. Follow us on all the stuff you see below. Um, yeah, we'll keep you guys updated, and we're working hard, and we're working hard for all of you. So, thanks for coming out, guys.